and I ran into a really cool table lamp for $25 and it is now also in the van so I had to go back again. So hopefully they're close to where <laughs> they said they were going to be and I better get there fast. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go! Good morning, viewers. It's George the Antique Nomad, and I am at a really special place. It's Monday morning. Where in the world is there a swap meet on Monday morning? Well, in Webster, Florida, there is a gigantic swap meet. And it's mostly antiques and vintage. I can't wait to go get started looking. Uh, we are also meeting a special friend here. Let's go see what there is. Hey, hey there! <laughs> hey, everybody! I'm with Alex from Chapter 2 Vintage Company and her husband. Hello. And what's his name again? Aaron. Aaron, there we go. Cool. Well, we are going to go look around Webster because it is just a fantastic flea market and take a look at all this stuff. It's new stuff, it's old stuff, it's everything in between. We've got a bunch of knives next to us here. We've got fun stuff all over the park. So we're just going to go see what shiny objects attract us. Cool looking. It definitely is. Oh, $24 for this old magazine stand. You see some old Burma shave signs back there. There are reproductions of those, so you kind of have to look close. But this one looks like it's a whole set. Let's see. So Burma shave. He saw. Kicked first the gas. The train. He saw the train. First kicked the grass and tried to duck it and then the bucket okay i think the guy tried to beat the train and got run over by it is what they're saying and he should use burma shave so he could at least look good when they picked up his corpse this guy's got lots of little stuff in boxes this is a fun flea market because they just get so much oddball stuff and it could be anything anywhere at any time these are eight dollars Little Easter things, I always like those. Whoops, a little wet out here this morning. St. Louis World's Fair, that's 35, so. One thing is that um, sometimes you'll see retail price on stuff here, because a lot of these are dealers who sell at other shows in Florida and they just come up because there's nothing else going on a Monday. So we can't necessarily expect everything to be a great bargain, but there are plenty of great bargains here too, and we will find them. Do you need the one with the hole in the end, or is it just a regular one? I think I don't know. Okay, so we are really liking these uh, really cool hood ornaments. They have a really nice selection, and they have some very valuable ones because they've got the ones with the Lucite. You see the DeSoto with DeSoto's face in the head, and that's going to be from the uh, early 50s, I believe. You see the old Dodge Ram, and I'm not sure who the guy with the wings up is. I know Packard had a design that was similar to that, but just really fun and very collectible. These folks get a lot of good high-end uh, car parts. They've got a bunch of the moto meters that are in the... Uh, 85 to $225 range because they've got some really good ones with the eagles and the birds on it. They've got lots of logos, emblems. This was a special piece that only came from the dealers. Oh, okay. Standard 51 Ford and all it had was just a little fin, but you could get this one from the dealer. Oh. And people tend to either love them or hate them. And nobody seems to be in between. No one in between, yeah. Well, I'm sure the purists think that, um, oh, it should have the uh, original with the little fin, but that's much more interesting looking. Are you liking living up around here? I like it. She, she, uh, it's tough for her because she's not close to everything, but. Yeah, not so many thrift stores, but at least you've got this amazing thing. Yes. Especially in season, it is just. Oh, it's way different than it was a month or two. And everybody comes from everywhere, and then it's suddenly this huge, cool thing. I kind of like this pig. He's a bit, a little bit broken, but he's cool. I like that pig too, actually. <laughs> he's neat. Yeah, I like him. 
I like old tins. We're at the $5 table here, and then we're going to look around. I look at everything, but uh, gosh, I do want to look at that pig that she saw because he's got, yeah, he's got such a great face. He yeah. looks just a little greedy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, he is a pig. <laughs> That's right. Oh, and then there's a kangaroo with a joey for uh, salt kinda and pepper like, shakers. Um, kind of looks like ceramic Floyd. arts, but it's Fitz and Floyd. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, look at this. What's oh, this? is that big Bob's boy? Big Boy or Something Shoney's like Big that. Boy, whatever Big Boy? Yeah. That's right. I remember being afraid of that when I was a kid. They had like a, an eight foot orange statue of him outside of the Big Boy where I lived. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Look. Everybody loves a cat. It's a rock, but they said they use it as a paperweight. Look, babe. It's painted that's like a cat. Here's one of these tables that's made out of various branches and ledges, and they usually come apart. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm in Vintage Modern, and I'm in a couple of other stores in St. Pete, too. So um, it's kind of nice because, you know, when, you have, when you're done with show season, there's a place to leave things. And they do a really good job. They, I mean, they do really well with uh, modernism and stuff. Never have enough room. <laughs> That is a fact. Yeah, we're originally from St. Pete, so we know that area well. Yeah, yeah. She said she was uh, born there, or? He was. Well, he was. And are you a native, too, or? Pretty much. I was born in Cleveland. Well, that's an antique. Your family didn't stay long. Not yeah. Long. Yeah. I was born in Michigan, and we lasted two weeks, and then we were in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I do like this part of Florida. It must be uh, it must be a big change moving away from the coast, huh? It is. I, I enjoy it. It's uh, quiet. Very nice. Quiet is nice, yeah. I Now here you go where there's box lots and you never know what you're going to find. Especially in these. Especially in these, yes. <laughs> well, he comes from New York where I'm at. So. Oh, really? He came from New York. Okay. Well, that's always fun because we love seeing different kinds of stuff down here from all over the place. How much is Arctic ice cream? Yes, can. Okay. But if you make a pile, everything's cheaper. Okay. Well, that's a good idea, yes. That's fun. I like old packaging. They've got that one, and they've got this one. Ithaca, New York. But I think I like the big one better. So let's see what else we can find here. They encouraged us to make a pile and make a deal. So let's see what they've got. Oh no, I saw envelopes and regular Diamond dies. That's kind of a cute old advertisement for diamond dies. Well, we'll see. That might be fun. These are nice props to have at a show in a display. The golden era of the Beatles. Oh, that's a later piece. Bingo. Atlantic City. Okay, not that. Yeah, these folks have really gotten into a lot of back stock, and it looks like they've got multiples of certain things. Oh, Sarve shoes. Yeah, sometimes what happens is a place goes out of business, and they find all this stuff in the back room, and then you just have scads of it. I see another Arctic freezer box with a penguin on it, and a bunch of old envelopes. It's a lot of this and that, but there's got to be something in here. 
Alex is trying hard. We all are. <laughs> there we go. Let's see what's over here. Seed catalogs, old stamp book, but it doesn't have any stamps in it. Okay, here's a piece of restaurant ware. Let's see where this is from. The Berghoff was probably a hotel, Syracuse, China. And then this one's also cafe ware. Cute, but nothing I really need. And then let's see down here on the bottom. It really is just random. These could be things that were found in a storage locker. These could be things that a dealer had and they've just all come out at once. Here's a big old pair of shoes with Vulcan heels. They look like they'd fit me, but I don't really need a pair of dress shoes. Not for doing this. So while I'm thinking of it, Please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. So this fellow is Doug, and Doug actually helped me out at an estate sale once he was my cashier, and Alex is picking through, and this is what you do with Doug's stuff, because um, Doug knows a lot, but he also just gets a lot of stuff cheap, and he just throws it out on the ground, and you dig for it. That is the way it works. But he does get cool stuff, and I've found things before, and Alex has a really cool-looking little uh, poodle box there. That is cute. Isn't it? The poodle's kind of coming off. Yeah, unfortunately, but it is neat. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Is that? Oh, the dragon handle is cool. Neat. Doncaster, 1910. So somebody painted that by hand, but they did a really good job. That's got to be a Limoges blank, I would think, or maybe Austrian, but. It's 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 really awesome, yeah. <laughs> How is he pricing today? Because I know those aren't his prices. I think it's whatever tickles his fancy. That's sort of how there. it works. Yeah, <laughs> I've noticed that with him. Yeah, he's an interesting guy. He cashiered for me at one of my estate sales, and he was great. Um, but he definitely dances to his own drummer. Right. Oh yeah. These are pirate era little bronze, uh, basically coins. They just sort of make their own because they needed to trade in something. And so these are slabbed. They've been graded and rated by International Numismatic Bureau, which means they are genuine. And that's a, effectively a certificate of authenticity when you see them in a slab. As long as you don't break the slab open, it's considered valid. And they're eight dollars each and i think i'm going to get them i have a feeling i could get 15 a piece because we're in florida and they're just a fascination and then i'm going to ask about this teapot it's got an old baltimore company name on the top i like this bell from india i like a few other things too but i also wanted to show that while they're looking on their phone trying to figure out stuff that they have a little pile here already a couple of really cute beaded bags and look what Alex found. This is really neat. Look at this handle. It's a dragon. And then she's got this cute little Anna Lee Christmas mouse. Cool stuff. You know you can repair them. Oh yeah. You... Let me tell you, how, me tell you how, how you repair them, okay? You fill it in in two or three layers and you sand it and then you take the watercolors because I, I can do... I, oh, watercolor, you, okay. If you had me a Hummel, I can repair it, and you won't, unless you put it under the... The, the black light, light, right. You will not tell it's been repaired. And all I use is watercolors, and I just blend it until I get that exact color, and, and rub it down a little bit. 
She's just got great eyes, and I love how warty she I is. I love him. <laughs> but yeah, I for ten, and you can repair that. It's a great price, even as is for ten. I just, I know I'll never do anything with it. It's so cute, though. Well, I had to make a quick run to the car, the first of hopefully many. That's one thing about Webster. Uh, Alex and uh, Aaron were kind enough to say they I could just put my stuff in their cart, but. I got this big piece of furniture here that disassembles and a big heavy teapot and a big heavy jacket that I want to shed because it's getting warm here. So back to go find them and go look. Okay, so I was, <laughs> funny thing, on the way back to find Alex and Aaron from my van, I ran into a really cool table lamp for $25 and it is now also in the van, so I had to go back again. So hopefully they're close to where <laughs> they said they were going to be. And I better get there fast. <laughs> this guy has been on American Pickers. Yeah. Yeah. This guy's got a lot of interesting old car stuff. There's a lot of interesting old car stuff here. He's got a whole bunch of old school cars that you never heard of anymore. The EMF, that was a car that was made by Garford and then Studebaker bought him out because they were terrible cars and Studebaker made them better. But all of these are mostly Studebaker related. The Erskine was their small light car in the Depression era. Everett Metzger, EMF was the company that they bought to build their gas powered cars when they switched from electric. They tried really hard to get electric cars to work. That's their 1920s logo there. And this one's from the 30s. Ah, oh, makes my heart happy. I wouldn't mind having that collection. Okay, we're recharged and we're shopping again. So, I'm gonna quit scaring the people with my camera and get close to the table here. Some bottle digs. Neat cypress knee. Oh. People all over my house that I don't know. That's so great. I like that. It's um, it goes with that bottle digging thing. Yep. You got to rescue old people. I love that hair piece. Uh, like a little comb. Yeah, it's like a comb in her hair. That's neat. <laughs> Ooh, nice detail. Yeah. This is a cool phone. It's an ITT. ITT, of course, uh, weren't they involved with the overthrow of the Chilean government? I think so. Yeah, I think Something that was like them. That. They were they were real sweethearts, but that was before this was made in 1980. But yes, I'd love it for ten dollars. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, this is my friend Bill. It turns out behind the mask, and he's got some cool stuff. So I'm going to see him at Mount Dora. Alex and I are both liking the kitties. One of them is playing the mandolin. Cats are clever, but I've never seen one actually play an instrument. Some pretty jewelry. How much is this piece? I could do thirty. And do you know who made it? Sometimes they're signed. Don't think this one is signed. Okay. So I am buying some jewelry. This lady has really nice stuff and she was very fair. The clamper and clips in the back are 35. The butterfly wing is five, 25 each on the Coro necklace and this Mexican bracelet. And $10 on the earrings. They're not Miriam Haskell, but they have the look. Well, I gotta say, Alex and Aaron are fast, and I think I see them down there. I gotta catch up. I got waylaid by jewelry, you know. It's nice to get waylaid by things, and we are at a flea market, so that can happen at any point. The next shiny object. I see a Coca-Cola dispenser. See, this is why I keep falling behind them. There's the Barbie and the ponytail the Coke bottle radio, but I wanted to show this guy the little home syrup dispenser. I wanted to show these because they are little miniature frying pans and they were to advertise stoves and heaters and ranges and hardware stores. Those are going to be from about 1910 approximately. I'll be curious to see what the prices are. And I like this guy, the boot scraper. Anniston, Alabama. 
and it is a dachshund, and I definitely have dachshund collectors. It's the Alabama Pipe Company. This is pretty cool. I have a feeling that this might be a good piece. We'll see what they want. Okay, well, the dog was 275 and probably worth it. He's got some really unusual pieces. This is a 1930s stamp machine. Might even be 20s. In fact, it's got patent dates of 1918. Really unusual. Priced at 900 but I've never seen one before. And then this toy sewing machine here, which is, I believe, 250 has its original box and all the extra parts. So Alex just got a cute little piece of Murano glass and a piece of black amethyst at the last place. This fellow's got some, I think these are Yadro. They could be now. Let's take a look. Oh yes, it is Yadro. How much is the goose girl? 45 each on the different pieces. And you see some have the matte glaze. Of the three of them, I would think the musician might be the most interesting. Thank you. Okay, we've got some neat old signs here, and they're in great shape. Look at this champion. It's like it's never been used. The feed sign. Grapeola for $4.95. These don't sell cheaply anymore, but these, on the other hand, seem like some pretty good deals on the Christmas houses. I guess because it's just after Christmas, but those seem like they're well-priced. And this fellow brings a bus full of stuff. He gets really interesting things, and I've bought a few things from him in the past, so let's see what he's got today. Uh, you know, write down your, your name, number, and address. I did that There's something couple, different. Never, late, late 90s and never got it. He's got these really fun matchbooks. If you ever see old matchbooks, look inside to see if the matches are actually printed as things, because these are really collectible. And they've got the bridge suits, they've got the cowboy printed on there, the flowers, sometimes it's the name of the place. But it's definitely something, open the cover of the matchbook when you get back to the 40s and 50s, because when you see them like this inside, they're more valuable. This is really cool. It's an atomic disintegrator from the 1950s, and those are worth a few hundred bucks. Anything that looks like a ray gun from that time is good money, but people are pretty much on to that. And we've got Disney's Hall of Fame from RKO Theater. Those were handed out when you went to the movies. And then we have this lovely thing. <laughs> Alex opened it and said, whoops. Alex picked it up first and opened it, and that's a good thing because now I know I can't open it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to be demonetized. Right, not on YouTube anyway. It says, National Rifle Matches, Navy Range, or Ranger, Caldwell, New Jersey, August 1919. And it's the Florida civilian team of crack shooters, I guess, who went up there and uh, went to this encampment. That is really something different. I like that very much. Look at her with the wing. It's incredible. Yeah, they're really neat. I mean, they're just so sculptural. Oh, gosh, Cars are not as fun as this now. No. <laughs> 40, uh, 4950 Chevrolet, the standard car had that. Uh huh. The deluxe car had that. Had the insert, right. But you could go to the parts department and get the accessory and that was And make that. it look like that. Wow. That was made by the same artist that made that one. Oh, before. that is cool. How interesting. So you've been uh, collecting and dealing in this for a long time. I recognize this one because I had a Studebaker Lark, and there it is. Well, we had such a fun time today, and we bought lots of stuff. And the best part is that um, I found out that we are compatible shoppers, and we actually touched a lot of the same stuff, and we like the same thing. We did. But we're able to do that without getting in each other's face and being competitive about it. So <laughs> no. it's awesome. I love it. And I can't wait to come back and uh, do this with you again. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!